Well, I guess all your pieces here uh, are special, but this is maybe extra, extra special, no? Well, I think we can call this a masterpiece, absolutely a masterpiece, because the thing about René Lalique is that he's a towering genius of the Art Nouveau movement, and it just so happens that he chose to express it in Goldsmith's work. He could have expressed in any other way. Um, he was a very uh, gifted painter and a sculptor, but his focus is on jewellery. So, in a way, it's a very special circumstance, a near unique spe uh, circumstance for a, a genius to enter our world. And I think that nobody could dispute that that's the case here. This is a homage uh, by Lalique to his wife, and this is Madame Lalique here. Okay. And they had an, an estate in the south of France with a pine forest in it. And, and um, there's every evidence that this is a, a portrait of her, which makes it uh, a very uh, um, special thing in jewellery design. Yeah. One doesn't expect to run into that at all. When you turn it over, you see the design is blind on the back, and here she is again. And um, this is a, the strongest sense that, that jewellery is a, something perhaps for the Wunderkammer, a, a real work of art um, to be treasured by everybody and collected. It was very much collected by Kalus Gulbenkian, um, the, the, the Armenian millionaire, and um, he had the greatest possible works of art, the Rembrandts and uh, the uh, uh, silver by Thomas Germain and, and the marvellous mosaics, and he put Lalique's contemporary jewellery in the same room with, with the masterpieces um, that he had because he thought that they were in a similar league. So, so I think he was right. How old is it? It's about 1900, probably just a late 19th century, very last yeah. late 19th century. And the thing about Lalique that's rather interesting and in contrast to Fabergé, the famous Fabergé, is that it's slightly disquieting. There's a sense of menace sometimes with, 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 with Lalique. Um, there, are, there are crows and spiders and insects and, and there's a sense of something faintly macabre. And, and it raises jewellery to a much higher level um, of, of, of expression. And how and, much I have to ask the well, bank? Well, you have to ask the bank for a very substantial sum of money. I mean, this is hundreds of thousands of euros. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but in a sense, measured against um, any other aspect of painting or sculpture here, or antiquities, um, it's not so very much uh, for, for the work of a genius. It's a good deal. It's a good deal, I believe, genuinely, because you will walk away um, with a unique work of art, um, resonant of the period from which it comes, saying everything about fin de siècle Paris, and, and uh, it's a work of art forever. When uh, um, Lalique died in 1930, his things were considered to be slightly out of fashion, and Gulbenkian said, to Madame Lalique, don't worry that your husband's things are out of fashion at the moment because there will be a time when they are the obsession of the contemporary elite. The European Fine Art Fair was started in Maastricht, a city located in the heart of Europe. Up until the 1970s, Europe was dominated by national art fairs hosted in different countries. Yet there was no international art fair that crossed the borders. That is, until a number of art dealers and lovers of art decided to start a trade fair in the region that transcends cultures, Maastricht a city that has been conquered by the French, the Spanish, and the Germans. This international climate allowed Tefev to grow into the most famous art fair in the world. The fair is hosted every spring in the trade fair and conference center Mech Maastricht that is used for events as varied as show jumping, culinary festivals, international trade fairs, and conferences. 
Maastricht lies in the junction of Germanic and Roman culture. Even the local residents speak a multitude of languages, and the regional Limburg dialect contains characteristics of Dutch, French, and German. Maastricht is situated on the Dutch borders with Belgium and Germany in a radius of just 25 kilometers. You can hear Dutch, German, and French being spoken, while English is the medium of instruction at Maastricht University. The famous Maastricht Treaty also saw the birth of a shared European currency, the Euro. Maastricht is a microcosm of Europe. It is a natural melting pot of cultures and languages, of open borders and of trading and trades. The rest of the Netherlands sees Maastricht as a little foreign with an added touch of French and just a hint of Italian. The quality of life in Maastricht is held in high regard. It then comes as no surprise that gastronomy arrived in the Netherlands by way of Maastricht. The city was the first in the country to have Michelin-starred restaurants. The rolling slopes just outside the city are covered in beautiful vineyards where wines are being aged in centuries-old cellars. The historic city center, which dates back to the Roman period of the first century, is an attraction that draws visitors from around the world. The centuries-old churches and ancient city walls and castles imbue the city with an intimate and romantic flair. A city where living is good and where Tefaf has been able to bloom into an unparalleled destination fair. Located between Amsterdam, London, Paris, and Berlin, the city is easily reachable to a large international public. During Tefaf, the entire city and surrounding region revolve around fine art, and visitors from across the world are welcomed with pride and in great style. Maastricht is a relatively small city, but is located in a border region that has several million residents. It is a city of gastronomy, but also has a rich cultural scene with many beautiful museums and theaters. André Rieu, Maastricht's most famous export, performs with his Johann Strauss Orchestra on the large Vrethoff Square every year. This event is visited by tens of thousands of visitors from across the globe. Other music festivals and concerts in Maastricht also draw large crowds to the city. Maastricht doesn't simply rest on its glorious past, but is also dedicated to the future by becoming a global leader in education, innovation, and scientific research. Maastricht provides answers to the questions of the world, especially to the questions about the environment and food provision. Scientists are serving up the first ever man-made beef burger. The cultured hamburger was invented in Brightland's campus in Maastricht. This is meat that is synthetically grown in a laboratory. The academic hospital will soon be opening a European training center for vascular surgery and houses one of the largest brain imaging scanners in the world. Their sister campus, Breitlands Hemelot, is a leader in the fields of chemistry and materials and is the birthplace of Dinema, the strongest and lightest fiber in the world. Maastricht combines the wisdom of age and the vigor of youth. Tradition and innovation go hand in hand. Students from across the globe feel at home in this historic context of quality education, a good quality of living, friendliness, and the city's international character. This is what makes this city and region a unique jewel in the Netherlands. Maastricht is a historic work of art and an indisputable choice of home for a world art fair.